Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Let's get into a little bit of this. You've just heard the trailer for disc number 23 is Animega. Um, <laughs> why do I have to keep saying it? Uh, yeah, disc number 23. The movie was released in 1987, which, uh, or was made in 1987, released in 88. Uh, surprisingly, just after Phenomena, we're going to get back to that in a second though. Not saying that one may have been inspired by the other. Not saying that at all. Not saying that Italy was ripping off itself. I would not do that. Not this guy. So let's turn our attention to the 88 Films website for the blurb. It says, when a group of popular kids at St Mary's College play a cruel prank on an unattractive school weirdo, Kathy, they leave the poor girl in a permanent coma. When beautiful new girl Eva, played by Lara Lambert, Lamberti, uh, from A Blade in the Dark, arrives at the school. She's given Kathy's old room and it isn't long before strange occurrences are afoot and the bodies are piling up. Kathy has possessed Eva using uh, her as her pawn in her quest for bloody revenge. From the godfather of gore, Lucio Fulci, comes this gross-out classic that features some of the maestro's most memorable late career set pieces, including a grotesque death by snail scene that one scene can never be unseen. Rediscover this underrated gem today as Animega uh, makes its HD debut f from a beautiful new 2K master commissioned by your friends at 88 Films. Special features on this disc are the restored 2K from original camera negative, the English LPCM mono audio, the Italian LCPM mono audio with newly translated subtitles, um, Fulci and the 80s, a feature length documentary looking at the twilight period of Lucio Fulci's legendary career featuring interviews with Claudio Fragrasso, Antonio Bibbo, uh, Michelle De Angelis, Massimo Antonelli, um, Antonio Tentori and more. Uh, they have also marked at 77 minutes. Um, the original trailer and the original opening title credits uh, and closing credits from Italy. Now, no, 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 no. Um, I will say I've watched all the special features. Yay, go Duncan. Um, and the documentary is actually worth the value of this. Anytime you get a chance to hear people in the industry chat about Fulci, it's the exciting part for me. Um, there are so many rumours about how cantankerous he was as a director that um, I just enjoy hearing stories of, of how bitchy he was. It was apparently bitchy about everyone and that makes me smile. Um, and yes, because it's more focused on 
towards the end of his career where he kind of found the theme um, and a, a very long career he found theme towards the end of his career uh, kind, of, kind of paving the way for a, a, a massive legacy in his, in his twilight years and beyond which is really spawned out when you think about it um, not the you know the, the standing of a movie like uh, Don't Torture a Duckling or even the Psychic it was more from Zombie Flesh Eaters onwards so you're really talking what 70, 79 to to kind of 81, 82 is his run of his really successful career internationally speaking so we have to take that into account as well um, yes this was the first time I was watching this movie always been aware of it I love the cover artwork um, it's one that stuck with me from the VHS days I always remember that you know this kind of cover artwork and you see it every now and again pop up on Facebook pages covering kind of European horror cinema and stuff and I was very much aware very much aware of the legendary snail sequence it has appeared on quite a few um, best of horror film scenes or gross out horror scenes and all the rest it, it makes an appearance here and rightly so it's icky and Filchie's the godfather of making things icky I bet the actors and actresses were just glad it wasn't buckets and maggots that were getting thrown at them like he would have been done well, doing some fucking four or five years earlier um, but but let's let's talk a little bit about the, the plot here of this movie. So the way I would describe this movie is it's kind of like Carrie um, meets Phenomena, and Phenomena's kind of like Carrie as well in a little bit. But there we go. Um, it's it's got this kind of setup of Carrie to an extent. Well, the setup of the the end setup of Carrie, where we have this girl who is but the, the opening sequence to this movie is about 50 shades of wrong um, <laughs> let's just get that out uh, it's such a fucking uncomfortable weird fucking scene of this kind of music in the background you're getting ready for a date yeah you're gonna be great he's gonna love you you know like all this pish um, <laughs> happening as she's getting makeup applied to her which makes her look like a fucking a pharaoh's prostitute um, and she's standing fully starkers in the buff, in the nude, in front of her two friends, well quote unquote friends, one female, one male, who I don't know if that's right, I don't know if he should be doing that, uh, who are dressing her up so she can go on this date. What she doesn't understand is that everyone's in on the prank, very Carrie-esque, like I said before, wink wink nudge nudge. Um, She's making out with this guy in the car and she's being very vocal about it, how this is, she never thought it would feel this way and it's so wonderful and all the rest. And all her quote unquote friends or kids from the school are in surrounding cars using some sort of high grade late 80s technology and listening into her. Um, and then they all turn her lights on to shame her and she finds out that the guy she's with is in on the joke. And she goes running away and they all chase her in their cars weirdly enough uh, through the woods and she runs out in front of a car and gets knocked over uh, and admitted to hospital now what's even stranger about this one is that she's in the hospital in a coma and then she flatlines or brain flatlines anyway and they just keep her alive and I don't think that's how it works when you get no brain signal at all when the brain is dead they usually just switch the life machine life support machine off I think but for some reason the doctors have decided they're just going to keep her on life support for no justifiable reason her mother is the cleaner who the uh, the students refer to as being um, uh, mentally handicapped in a way which I'm making it sound a bit more PC than what they do in the movie uh, but she appears to have some weird sort of powers as well whenever she gets angry her eyes glow red um, you know, you would not like to see the mother angry because, uh, you know, she's going to turn into the incredible cleaner, maybe. Um, you know, like, just this kind of... She just is always in the background of this movie. So, when... Um, you know, when she's... When she, Cathy, uh, dies um, or goes brain dead, we see her, her spirit leave her body, so to speak, but still speaking. Kind of a little bit of... Um, a, a little bit of short night glass dolls here and that's kind of trying to track back that we hear this inter internal monologue about you know the, this 
kind of character that is on their deathbed, so to speak. Um, but she somehow manages to uh, occupy the body of this brand new, very attractive, very hip, very popular girl, Eva, who starts at the, the same school. She has had some mental trauma before. She's been locked up in a, a psychiatric ward to be released to start mid season and she is uh, she is the buck of this movie in that she enjoys to fuck um, because pretty much her whole modus operandi at this school is to get laid by lots of men she's all about that bobby she wants it in and around her mouth and potentially up her vagine um like that's literally the plot of this story is this woman wants to have sex a lot but what we don't know um, as people attend in the school, but what the audience knows, us watching the movie, is that she um, is really a kind of a patsy um, being controlled by Kathy's character to set up all these weird and wonderful um, vengeance-like deaths upon the people that wronged her. Some of them are very cool, some of them are awful, Um the the snail one is a scene, like I say, that pops up over and over again and is uncomfortable to watch because there's snails on a human body, not because it's scary at all. It really, really isn't. Unless you had like a petrifying fear of snails and slugs, um, it's not a particularly scary scene. There's a scene where a guy gets attacked from his, his mirror selfie. His, you know, his self-reflection attacks him through a mirror and kills him. Um... And yeah, we, we we continue on with this one. Uh, Eva is seducing the doctor that is looking after her, who also has this weird sort of infatuation with another schoolgirl. Which I mean, we're talking about a doctor here, a surgeon who must be in his like he's a surgeon, so he's easily in his late thirties, early forties. Yet is somehow just hanging around with school kids and making the 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 fuck eye at them, if you know what I mean kind of weird doesn't make sense um you know what i mean but all these deaths keep appearing up um it's all very very strange uh, a marble statue falls on one of the students uh because it comes to life or at least she thinks it comes to life and crushes her to death um eva eventually gets locked back up in the 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 nut house um for obvious reasons, she's kind of crazy, kind of intense, and as a result of that, the doctor then can start dating Kim, who is one of the roommates who was also kind of involved in Kathy's untimely demise. Um, and the movie finishes in this massive culmination scene, which is you know it's going to be this crescendo of of a scene where we get kind of shades of of. Filch's earlier 80s works in a morgue so we're thinking the beyond, the dead bodies Eva's going to pluck her eyes out and uh, Tim's trying to rescue but he's feeling futile and it looks like it's going to go ahead until all of a sudden Eve collapses to the ground um, kind of dies kind of um, and we realise that Kathy's mum, the cleaner uh, has unplugged the life support machine um, now, has she done this because she feels sorry for her child? Has she done this because she feels that it is kind of unnatural for the hospital to keep her on life support? Or has she done this because she has finally realised, in her infinite wisdom, that her daughter has been using the powers inherited from her mother, maybe question mark, red eyes, to... Um, to rot vengeance? We don't know, but the, the soul of Cathy rises out of her body and floats away um, and then the movie finishes and I was left like what the fuck have I just watched what have I just watched um, this movie is a bit of a shambles and that's not to say that it's not enjoyable it's just a bit of a fucking shambles um, it, it kind of missteps right at the beginning the beginning of this movie is cringe worthy to the max all this he's gonna love you you're on a date the kind of music stuff is just terrible um, the way she dies is kind of terrible and once again you've made this set up that I feel sorry for this girl so I should be on board with all the vengeance that she's conducting but then the movie tries to pivot halfway through and say well actually she's the bad person and I don't think that switch is handled well it's certainly not written well or set up well 
Some of the deaths are awesome. Fulci is the godfather, really, of giving you memorable death scenes in movies, and he doesn't hold back here, and that's cool. Um, so some of the deaths are awesome. Fair play to that actress that let all those snails crawl over you. It would not have fucking been me, and I'm not even scared of snails, but it just wouldn't have been me. It's icky and wrong. Icky and wrong, I say. Um, but it's kind of ham-fisted, this movie. It really doesn't know what it wants to be. I mean, there's a little bit of Patrick in here as well. Um, and, you know, and controlling things while being in a coma. So it's, it, it's a mismatch of all these much better movies. Um, and never really manages to contain a consistent tone. Um, it, it's kind of sexual politics, so to speak. is very weird. This doctor should not be hanging around with these school kids. Let alone just jumping from one to one. Just like, like I said before, making the fuck eye at them and just jumping from one to one. It's weird and it's wrong and I don't know how comfortable I feel watching it either. Um, the score is not great in this movie either, if I'm honest. Um, now, the score was done by Carlo Maria Cordillo, I think is how you pronounce that. And it's it's forgettable. It's nowhere near the, the bevy of amazing... Uh, talent that Filchi had even five years before where it's like Ritz Ortoloni or Fabio Frizzi or things like that we're, we're kind of working with a guy who I in this instance I don't know much of his other stuff is less a, a lesser sort of um, composer he, ju he just doesn't doesn't have the same gravitas he need from it it feels cheesy cinematography is kind of shitty in this one as well that's Luigi Sarcesi um, it's just it doesn't once again even like you look at the beyond right look at the beyond ladies and gents it's a movie that's icky and it's weird and strong the cinematography is so much better than what a movie like that should have and it's kind of what sets it apart it's kind of what elevates a lot of Filch's work it's not just the stories he's telling but it's the angles at which he shoots them and the cinematography and the cinematography in which is delivered this just doesn't, it just feels a bit, at times a bit TV movie in a way which is not great, but the, even the palette of the movie is just a bit flat. And yeah, I, I, I didn't hate it, I, I, but I would be loath to say that I loved it either. Um, there were some really cool things done in here, but they're few and far between and kind of spaced out in a way which doesn't give the movie a flow that it should have. Um, it's bonkers, it's Filchy doing bonkers and I, I appreciate that he's about to go even more bonkers and about a year after this way he does um, when he starts uh, making Cat in the Brain which I can't wait to get to talk about because that movie is all shades of what the fuck um, but yeah, it's, I, I mean it's just a, a kind of middle of the road Filchy movie it's, it's nothing to write home about, it's nothing great it's certainly... Um, isn't anywhere near what the, the maestro had delivered before or would really deliver after to be honest with you um, as the later half of his career goes it definitely stands out but it stands out because some of the movies around it are awful so that's that's kind of where we lie with this one if I give it a grade I'm going to swing in with probably a 3.5 for this one it is between the I liked and really liked um, it's worth a watch it's worth a one time watch it's worth owning a disc for the dock uh, 77 minutes of people talking about Filchi is worth the price of admission for sure and like I say there's a couple of scenes in here that are worth watching as well but overall uh, it's, it's not a great movie it's, it's very cheesy, it's very hokey and it's, it made my eyes roll a couple of times while watching it so I need to be honest, I need to be honest about these things I expected a bit more, this one has been on the docket for years for me and I just never really lived up to the expectations I was hoping for so that was Animega um, by Lucio Fulci from 1988 um, yeah uh, 3.5 out of 5